Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin, please like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. So today, we will be solving this problem shown on the screen. This is an equilibrium problem. And what we have here are two cables that are tied together at point C and loaded as shown with this 300-pound weight. And we are tasked with determining the tension in AC and BC. So first thing you want to do with these types of problems is that you want to draw your free body diagram. Your free body diagram will just be a simplistic view of this overall picture with all the information in the description applied to that picture. So you want to start with your X and Y coordinate system. And your origin point typically is the point where all the uh, cables, all the weight, all the forces, everything collides and combines at a one single point. And our origin point will be point C here where cable AC, BC, and the weight all combine and collide. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply this weight of 300 pounds. Me going in a downward direction because that's how gravity works. And then we're going to have our AC and BC cables here. And oops. So I'm going to call this one force BC for cable BC. And then this one would be force AC. Now. I uh, know that these two cables have to be in tension, and if this 300 pound force is pulling downward, then these cables will try to snap back to their original position. Therefore, they will have forces going in this upward direction. So we also need the angles of each of these forces for AC and BC. Uh, BC is 20 degrees off the horizontal, so that means we are also 20 degrees here off the X, which is the horizontal. And then AC is 40 degrees off the horizontal, so that means that this is 40 degrees here. <clears throat> so this is our completed free body diagram. So we really don't need this picture anymore. We can just use our free body diagram. And the only two unknowns are the ones that we are tasked with finding, which is AC and BC right here. So with these equilibrium problems, after you draw your free body diagram, you get all your information with your angles and your forces and your unknown forces on there. Uh, if you don't know what your next step is, the best next step would be to use your summation equations or start writing your summation equations. Now, for this particular problem, since we are in 2D here and we are all about a single point, we only have summation in the Y and summation, oh, not in the Z, in the X direction. So we have a vertical summation and a horizontal summation that must all be in equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start writing these equations and we're going to start with summation in the Y direction. So every force that has a component in the y direction must cancel with each other and be equal to zero. And we're going to take everything in the upward direction as a positive number in this equation, everything in the downward direction as a negative number. So we're going to start with our unknowns first. So let's start with FAC. So FAC is up and to the left. So its components in the X and Y direction will be going in that same general direction of up and to the left. And then for FBC, it is up and to the right. So its components will be up and to the right. So looking at the Y here for FAC, its component in the Y direction will be going upward. So this will be a positive FAC. And then we have to utilize the angle to get it into the Y direction. And in this case, it will be sine of 40 degrees. So the angle's off of the X. So if we take cosine, that will be uh, concerning ourselves with the X. The Y is opposite the 40 here. It's not touching it. So that would be sine because sine deals with opposite. And then we're going to have plus FBC because the component in the Y direction for BC is in the upper direction. And then same reasoning here, we will have sine of the angle of 20 degrees because the angles off of the X, the Y is opposite that angle, sine deals with opposite. And then lastly, we have our minus 300 pounds here. And all of that has to cancel to be zero. So not really much we can do here with the Y equation. We have two unknowns of FAC and FBC can't solve it. So whenever this happens, just go to your next equilibrium equation. And in this case, we have our X equation. 
And we're going to take everything to the right as positive, everything to the left as a negative number inside this equation. So once again, just start with FAC. FAC's component in the x direction will be going leftward. So that will be minus. And since the angle is off of the x, it is going to be cosine because cosine deals with adjacent. And then we're going to be dealing with FBC. FBC's component is pointed to the right here. So it'll be positive inside this x equation. And then the 20 degrees is off of the x. So that is adjacent. And that will be cosine of that angle, which is cosine 20. The 300 is only in the y. So we don't have any part of it in the horizontal direction. It's only in the vertical direction. So there are no other forces in the horizontal direction. So that is it for our x equation. Once again, looking at the x equation, we have two unknowns, can't solve it by itself. But what we can do is that we can use the x and the y equation together and solve simultaneous equations here. So with the equilibrium equa uh, uh, excuse me, equations written out like that, we really don't need our free body diagram anymore. So what I'm going to do is use the x equation here. And I'm going to turn one of these terms um, and make it uh, equal to another term. So what I'm going to do is this from our x equation here. I'm going to put everything in terms of FBC. So I'm going to take FAC and take it to the other side so it's positive. So I have FBC cosine of 20 is equal to FAC cosine of 40. So I'm going to divide everything by cosine of 20 to get FBC by itself. So FBC will equal FAC cosine of 40 divided by the cosine of 20. And the cosine of 40 divided by the cosine of 20 gives me 0 0.815 times FAC. So what this means is that FBC is roughly 0 0.815 of whatever FAC is. So what I can do with this is I can take this right here, the 0 0.815 FAC, and plug it into the y equation. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong direction. <laughs> Get rid of that real quick. So what I can do is plug it into FBC here, sorry. So when I plug in for F. FBC over here with this term of FAC, then every unknown in the Y equation will be in terms of FAC and I can solve for that variable. So utilizing the Y equation now, I have FAC times the sine of 40 plus my new term substituted in for FBC, which is 0 0.815 FAC times the sine of 20 minus the 300 equal to zero. So what I can do is I can combine like terms here and solve for FAC. So the sine of 40 plus 0 0.815 times the sine of 20 gives me 0 0.92 FAC. And if I take the 300 to the other side, it equals 300 there. So then my FAC is going to be 300 divided by 0 0.92. And that gives me 326.1 pounds in that original arrow direction of up and to the left. So we just found one of the tensions uh, in the cables, which is FAC. And now what I can do is I can take this value that I have here and plug it into this equation up here previously, and then I can get FBC from that. So let's do that. So FBC is 0 0.815 times FAC, which we just found to be 326.1, which this gives me an FBC value of 265.8 pounds in that upward right direction. And there are our two uh, cable forces 
that we're looking for, FAC and FBC. Now, with all equilibrium problems, you can always check your answers. So to make sure that 326.1 and 265.8 are the correct values for each cable, what we're going to do is we're just going to plug back into our equilibrium equations here to make sure that we roughly come out to be zero. Now, in most cases, it may not come out to be zero. It should be really close to zero, but it may not be zero just due to rounding. So what we're going to do is we are going to check these values just by plugging them back in. So we have 326.1 for FAC times the sine of 40 plus 265.8 for FBC times the sine of 20 minus 300. And this gives us roughly 0 0.2, which is pretty close to zero. Now, it will, as I said before, most likely never be exactly zero. Um, due to rounding. Now, it should be a very small percentage, whatever this value comes out to be, should be a very small percentage of what your answers were. So 0 0.2 compared to 265 and 326 is very, very small. So we know we're in um, good standing here that we have good answers. Now, if this 0 0.2 came out to be like 65 or 75 or something like that, a little, something higher, well, then I should start thinking about, well, something's wrong here um, because that's a large, per, larger percentage than what I'm going to think is acceptable for 265 or 326. But as I said, most of the times this will not come up to be zero. It should be relatively close to zero or a low value compared to what your previous answers were. So that's how you solve the problem and that's how you check the problem. So I hope this was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved of this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.